Hey guys, hey gorgeous. Today we're gonna to be doing a makeup tutorial and I'm gonna be talking about my struggles with borderline personality disorder, PCOS, my thyroid issues, anxiety, depression, all of that. So let's get started. Oh, wait, before we get started, I wanna do a haul. <laughs> I got some stuff. Cause you know, I love Hello Kitty. Here, 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 here. Everywhere you look in my room is Hello Kitty. So I got one of these templates. Um, I have some of these. These are all from Vi Below. The ones that I have over there, I got from, I got, I had them in my room. You might have seen them on my other videos, but I got them from school, for school. Um, but yeah, another one I added in my collection for my dorm next year, but I'm obviously gonna put it up. Duh. Got two pairs of pants. I'm wearing one of them. They're light blue like this, cause that's my favorite color. That's the makeup we're doing today. We're doing a light blue, or a blue eye today. But I got a cute spring dress. Got this from Target, it's Vera Gorge. I have been loving wearing dresses. And I was, hello? The dress is broke. No. There is no way this dress. Oh my god, okay, yeah, there's shapes in here. Oh my god, I was about to be like Target. I want a freaking refund. Anyway, this is the beautiful dress. It has little lemons. Or wait, now are these lemons? No, they're little tulips. <gasps> tulips? Oh my god, it, it's so cute. I've been wanting spring dresses like crazy so i'm glad that i finally found one because all the ones at target are for skinny bitches and i'm not i'm a big bitch i'm a big better bitch so that's that girl i got another hello kitty sweatshirt of course if you guys didn't know this is my favorite character cinema roll of course of course my favorite character of all time and my favorite color is baby blue too so you know, I had to get up. It's in an XL, cause like I said, I'm a big bad bitch. So we had to get around an XL, of course. What I got was these adorable pants. They're pink. They're cute and they're pink and they're big and they're lovely and they're gorgeous. And I absolutely am in love with them. These are from the brand Universal Thread. These are very cute. They're very big. They're very baggy, which I love because a lot of sweatpants fit very thin on me and they show my crack. And we don't do that around here, so they had to go. But I got these because they're very big and comfortable and I can fit my big old booty in them, so. Okay, girlies. All right. Let's, let's get started, girl. First, I'm going to take my hair down, which I just got my hair cut today, and it's short now. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's short now. So, I have a TikTok shop emailing me. <laughs> Another Hello Kitty item, of course. Anyway, I'm a Hello Kitty fanatic. Like, anything Hello Kitty, I'm like, oh, I got to have that. Oh, and Bridgerton. Do y'all like Bridgerton? It's become one of my favorite shows. <sniffs> one of my favorite shows from Netflix. I'm like absolutely obsessed with it. And it's like, it's a must have. Like anything in that era or any like thing Bridgerton brand, like a collab, I have to have all of it. I want every, I need it all. So if you see something, send it to me. Thank you. BPD. Let's get started, girl. I have what's called borderline personality disorder, meaning I am very fucked up on the inside, the outside, everything, but mainly mentally. I'm very fucked up. I have a distorted reality. I have memory loss from it. I constantly suffer from, you know, anxiety and overthinking, and I repress all of my trauma, which led me to memory loss and I don't really remember the important events of my life. So this is going to be mainly me talking about 
things that I remember, things that impacted me, like school. School's gonna be a really big one. And then we'll just go from there. This is my makeup box. It's very Bridgerton, isn't it? Yes! So we're gonna do the blue look today. So of course we're gonna go with the Blue Blood palette from Jeffree Star. Obviously, duh. Okay, so I got all of my base products out and ready to you know show them to you but i want to go over what bpd actually is so it's a mental disorder characterized by unstable moods behaviors and relationships that is the definition treatment can help but my condition and the people who also have this besides me it cannot be cured so we have to live with it for the rest of our lives so we have intense and kind of unstable relationships with people that we know friends family and even loved ones like partners we have a distorted self-image of ourselves and like i said before we have a distorted reality like we're not very like in the moment type of people this one sucks we have um impulsive behaviors which means driving recklessly thoughts of suicide things to harm ourselves because i have noticed over time that a lot of people with this disorder are very self-sabotaging so we will harm ourselves by turning the water up all the way on the shower to literally burn our skin because we think it feels good but we're really harming ourselves um drunk driving speeding um unsafe sex substances you know a lot of us binge eat which goes into pcos but i will get into that later so let's start officially now so my bpd started when i was very young i'm using the master prime maybelline master prime the poor minimizing and blur one so my, my BPD started when I was very young. So when I was growing up, I didn't have a lot of emotional stability. And I had to do everything pretty much like on my own as a kid. Um, not to say that my childhood wasn't good. It was for, you know, the most part of what I've been told. But also with the memory loss, I only remember the traumatic Thank you. The only the like traumatic parts of my childhood because they stuck out the most because that's mostly what I had experienced. So when I was really young, this is my trauma dumping on you guys now. I was a divorced, like p parent divorced child. So that meant having mixed thoughts about which parent is the good parent, which parent is the bad parent, hearing sides from both stories, not knowing what to believe, not having trust in people. So I developed this disorder very young in my life. Um, growing up, my, we will call him sperm donor because I don't fuck with him. Um, my sperm donor was a piece of shit. Um, he was very violent and mean to everyone around him he I believe he is a psychopath truly as someone who has studied psychology and knows what environment he is around by also studying sociology and learning about it through college he's a psychopath and I don't like him and he's a terrible person but enough about him I'm using the Superstay foundation of course in the shade porcelain because I'm gonna black and I'm white um but yeah, so I was around him. So I was the type of kid that pretty much lived with my mom. My mom fought for custody of, for me for a long time. And, mm, and when I was younger, I would have to go to Kroger all the time because that's where my drop-off station was. So the courts decided that he was allowed visitations with me so and I will hate the courts forever for that because that is what fucks me up you'll learn here in a little bit but that is what fucked me up make sure to blend your foundation into your neck or else you'll look weird as fuck so off topic foundation is really hard for me to match to my skin type because the first two foundations of every line don't match me they're either too white or too orange and then the rest of them don't either. So I have to like 
mix and match products all of the time to get them to fit my face but you know it's fine Maybelline ugh, Maybelline is one of my favorite brands and I love Maybelline and okay, moving on so like I said before visitations so I would get dropped off at Kroger at 7 in the morning every Sunday and you could only have a limited amount of time with me because the court was like you have visitations, but we also don't fucking like you, so you're only going to have her for a little bit of time because we don't fucking trust your ass. And I wish I would have never done that, but, you know, whatever. I'm a criminal justice major now, so I know about the courts, so fuck the court system. Um, also, yeah, fuck the court system, low-key. Um, but, so I would get dropped off all the time. You can hear my beauty sponge. It's so fucking annoying at Kroger and go up to his house where he lived which was rugged dusty dirty literally the hood I'm not fucking kidding you so we're the white hood the redneck hood I should say not really redneck just very poor and like gross anyway but yeah so I would go up there and on the way up to the house, whenever I was separated from my mom and it was just me and him after he picked me up, he would tell me all these crazy stories of why my mom is a terrible person and how, you know, he's planning to kill my mom and all this other shit. And like, I was a tiny baby child. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? So I was just sitting there the whole time, quiet. Whenever I went up there, I was always quiet. And I just listened and I observed my surroundings because I was scared. I didn't know what to do. And he's a very violent person who uses guns and he's literally psychotic and he would fight over money and, you know, cigarettes and he would sell drugs. And I would be in the car with him while he was selling drugs and he would use me as a pinpoint or as like an advantage to be like, oh, I have to feed my daughter. Can you buy this thing of cocaine off me? Didn't know it till I got older. Didn't realize that it's that's what that was until I got older. So, yes, I have been on drug runs before. And I'm not proud to say that. But I didn't really have a choice. I was a little tiny baby child. Um, but, yeah. And he would also use me as a, you know, a, I guess like a weapon to, like, get girlfriends. And be like, oh, this is my beautiful daughter. I am not your daughter. Nor will I ever be your daughter. Quit talking to me. <laughs> Stop talking to me. So that's where all of it started. So from that, you can take that I had emotional detachment from everything. I had a very distorted reality. And a lot of those memories I have, I used to repress because I didn't want to think about them. So I was just a very confused and traumatized child right from the get-go kind of annoying getting on my nerves so from then on let me take these out too because i don't want to get makeup on them okay so from then mm, my weave i you know what fuck that i don't care so from then i pretty much became like a very sad and depressed confused kid I didn't have that many friends growing up I was very kept to myself um, I won't go into detail about a lot of the stories that I went through as a kid that of course I remember because there's probably more I just don't remember them um, eh. but yeah but like I said, I was traumatized from the fucking get-go as a kid. But the other half of my family was not like that. Everyone else in my family has a mom and a dad. And I am just here living my best fucking life. Trying to survive. So, I grew up and was told stories both from my mom and my dad about how, you know, both of them were supposedly these oh, this is getting on my nerves these awful people right so I didn't know what the fuck was going on and I was just like you know what 
I'm just gonna leave it be. And you know, I went, I did what I had to do and I went to his house and you know, just live my life. Now, Christmases and birthdays and holidays, they didn't care about me. They are the type of people to be like, the phone works two ways, but I'm only supposed to call them. They didn't care, they didn't give a shit. They didn't buy me anything. They fought over money and drugs all the time. And I'm just a kid on the couch, like, listening to it. I seen my uncle overdose one time. He was out for three days on an air mattress. Um, they would constantly threaten each other with guns. So I was around a very toxic environment from a, little, from a small age. And that kind of became my personality when I grew up. So when I got a little bit older and I was in elementary going to middle school, I was a very aggressive kid. I'm using Tarte Shade Tape, of course, in the shade Fair Neutral. I was a very aggressive kid and this wouldn't change for a long time. And I never really understood why. I was so aggressive and, oh, this is a new bottle. Soleil. I didn't really understand why I was so aggressive until later in life when I actually sat down and looked at myself and like got my life together by myself. Um, but at this time I had been through a lot of therapists and none of them had done what I, you know, needed like needed them to do. They didn't really do their job efficiently. I went through about five therapists and they just treated me like a kid. Like I wanted serious medical help to help me with what I was going through. And they just treated me like a child and told me, let's make slime or let's color a book. And I'm like, no, I'd like to get over this shit, please. So I had to get over everything myself. So I was very self independent and very mature from a young age again um I will say a young age a lot in this video just an FYI but yeah so from that point on I was like I don't need a therapist I'll do it myself I started middle school and like I said I was a very aggressive teenager so not really teenager but a very aggressive kid I'd still say um and I was very mean to people. I was also very kept to myself, but I was also very mean. Um, I was very risky with the things that I did. It wasn't anything bad, but it just like, like, like they said before, impulsive, like decisions. Yeah, stuff like that. Just stupid stuff like that. Just things that would be labeled as being a kid, but for me wasn't being a kid. It was... A mental disorder. High school was very hard. I suffered with body issues a lot growing up. I was always the bigger kid um, anywhere. I was always like just stressed about the way that I looked pretty much. I'm going with Mac Studio Fix in NC15. And from then I really just learned that where you don't have a parent in your life you want to be like that parent for a little bit of your life to understand not not necessarily to understand but over time you do understand but you don't have that parent so you want to kind of channel that parent <laughs> like you kind of want to be like them and you know because you don't have them and that's pretty much what I did so I was like I said very aggressive and a lot of people could tell that I was different and I had body issues a lot, which is leading into PCOS here in just a second. Where the fuck is my brush? Oh, here it is. <laughs> um, this is the one size turn up the base in Fair 2. I'm going to put this on the rest of the face, parts of the face that I did not highlight with my Studio Fix. So, I'm going to be saying a lot of repeating words in this video, but you know, it's fine. That's just how I talk. Um, what was I at? Oh, yeah, body issues, and I still have them to this day. 
and I didn't find out until later in life that I actually had PCOS because nobody decided to tell me. Um, I went to the doctor, they dismissed it as you're just fat and unhealthy, so you need to just eat better. Which is what happens with a lot of women with PCOS, which I have now discovered. It happens with a lot of women. And there's no there's not a lot of research behind it and doctors don't really give a shit. They just want your money, especially the US health system. They just want your money and for you to get the fuck out. So I struggled with that for a long time, but eventually today I I have health and I'm on medication for it, but moving on. Um, not a lot, like, uh, a lot in my life changed, but my personality stayed the same. Like, my home life was different, and I think around this time when I turned 15, I kicked my dad out of my life completely. Because I grew up and realized that, you know, my mom was the one that I needed to believe. Because she fought for custody of me. He didn't want me. He didn't want to pay child support. He didn't care. He never called me. Didn't give me gifts. Never told me he loved me. I don't even think I remember a time where he told me that he loved me. Which is kind of crazy to think about it now. Anyway. Yeah, he was mm, a piece of shit. So I was like, you know what? We're team mom all the way. So thank God I had some sense as a kid because if not, I don't know where the fuck I'd be today. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a break for just a second and cool down, go get some water because I'm very emotional right now. I changed the camera angle, so do not be alarmed. <laughs> okay, I'm um, I'm back now. I'm okay. I'm back now. I took my little break for just a minute, but I think by God, this looks this looks crazy. This looks crazy. Anyway, um, see, you see how it looks orange on camera, but it's not like that in real life. Anyway, moving on. So, through middle school, I was very aggressive. I did scandalous things, like I said before, and I was trying to figure out who I was, but that wouldn't happen for a really long time. Um, going through middle school was very tough for me. I didn't really, you know know who I was so it was very difficult to navigate my everyday life and also with BPD it's a personality disorder so you don't know where you don't know who you are so I'm going every day around my life literally wandering just living the same day over and over and over again because I had no me I didn't know who I was other people could tell me who I was but I'd be like because mm -mm, nothing felt right so, uh, I cut my dad off, like I said before, and I pretty much was like, I hate you, bye. Gone, dead, never talked to him again. To this day, never talked to him again. And from there on, my life has gotten so much better. Um, but still, I had, I still have a lot of issues. <laughs> Taking my Mac bronzer that looks like a lot on camera but that is not a lot in real life IRL that's not a lot makeup looks so different on camera like don't trust everything you see please like as somebody who is very like knows a lot about social media please do not believe all the beauty tutorials that you see because a lot of them are fake and they suck so yeah they all suck and they're terrible. <laughs> they're not terrible. They're just very unrealistic to real people's lives who are trying to imitate them. And there's filters you use and there's lighting. Of course, I have lighting, but mine is very five below. <laughs> so, and I want my channel to be realistic as possible to give you guys kind of like a, kind of like a real world aspect, like a real creator, not like a fake ass creator. Because I hate bitches like that. We're going to powder that in just a minute. And then fix it so it's not like that intense. But that's what it's going to be for right now. So that looks so crazy. Anyway. Um, high school is really. Oh hi. I skipped over a very important detail. My current boyfriend. So I met my boyfriend when I was in middle school. And we knew we were always going to be together which is kind of crazy but we had loved each other literally from the moment we met each other 
and we just wanted to be stupid kids before we actually like sat down and figured out that it was the right time to be together and now is that time but yeah during the time of middle school when I was very fucked up he still loved me at that time which I think is so romantic and to me very heartwarming because when you grow up like this you just believe that nobody will love you ever that like you're not worthy of love you're not worthy of like anything so yeah very heartwarming to me actually because I never thought that I would get married and now I might so uh, I don't know girl anyway high school rolled around and I was still a very aggressive person but even more aggressive so as someone who has studied sociology this is going to be a very long topic I went to a school called Capital High School and the scene there is very aggressive very gang drugs um guns very much that and it's probably like the most like people call it like the ghetto school of where I live it's very much that so we had a lot of fights going on I was definitely one of those girls I had a tag on my pants I was very much one of those girls who would tussle um, I was so tussle a bitch today. I don't give a fuck, period. Um, I wore long nails. I had makeup on. That's just the type of society that I was around. So, you know, as people, we adapt to our environments. And that's just who I was. I was very aggressive. I was causing, you know, chaos with bitches, you know. And I look back on that time of my life and I feel very embarrassed. Because that's not really who I am. And a lot of people see me like that because that's who I was for a big chunk of my life. Um, well, big chunk as of like my 19 years of living, a big chunk of that. Um, that's just who I was and that's who I believe that I was. But as I got older, I started to realize that I have issues. I knew something was wrong with me. I was tired of feeling like shit every day of my life and that's constantly what I felt like and it was because of my BPD and PCOS so we're going to talk about PCOS now just for a brief second so PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome and it fucks up your entire goddamn body and guess what bitch you can't lose weight even if you fucking try um that that's it girl that's it. So now I'm on medication for it and my metabolism's fucked up, my insulin's fucked up, my sugar levels are fucked up, my triglycerides are fucked up, my white blood cell counts are fucked up, I could have type 2 diabetes, all because of a fucking genetic disorder that I got. So with women with PCOS, a lot of us are obese because our metabolism and our entire system is fucked up and even if we diet and exercise properly, we gain weight instead of losing it. So a lot of women just are just obese and we live like shit because it's literally the hardest fucking thing in the world so that's why I have body issues because I had that disorder ever since I was born and I can't get rid of it and I cannot get rid of it so welcome to my world so pretty much everything in my life is fucked up and pretty much you will start to learn that everything in my life is fucked up See how much more calmer that is, even if, you know what, it looks better in person, but whatever, girl, we're going with it. My life has been pretty fucked up so far, but thankfully I did have my mom and at the time, my grandpa, sadly, my grandpa passed away very recently as I am recording and posting this video the same day, um, he passed away and my life has been a lot different since then but <sighs> moving on back to my life story so having this disorder and not knowing it until my senior year of high school uh, <laughs> so fun right not really <sighs> kind of set me up for failure mentally in a lot of different areas I was very self-deprecating, very self-harming. I did self-harm a lot, especially in middle school. Um, suicidal, very depressed, 
very, very, very depressed. And that's what this disorder does to you. You're not depressed like a normal kid. You're severely depressed, like adult stress depressed from a very young age. And it takes a toll on your mental health and your overall well-being and personality and future health. So, you know, I try my hardest to be, you know, the funny, the funny cousin, the funny family member, you know, the one, you know, who brings the party. But deep down, I really was suffering. Seriously, I really was suffering. And, you know, I really haven't talked about it until now because a lot of people don't really give a shit about how other people feel. They have their own issues. But I think it's good to sit down and listen to somebody you care about because you never know if they may take their life or something may happen to them. I'm just very open ever since I went to college. I'm very educated and open now so my life perspective has changed on a lot of things <sighs> but girlies let's get back to high school so in high school i was not the sweetest i was very mean you know like i said before fighting tussling with bitches um standing my ground picking fights with people um gossiping you know, talking shit about people, making group chats. I was one of those people. And I very much highly regret doing that. And I am going to influence you not to go down that path. And not be so good for you in the future. When you go back and see these people, when you're all grown up, they will remember you as this terrible person if you cuss them out or if you fight them. And it can just lead you to just a lot of overwhelming stress. So, do not be one of those people... It, it's not really cool. It's cool in the moment, but forever, no. So I don't recommend that you do it. So I'm putting this on my outer crease and trying to blend it out like so. <laughs> I get so distracted when I'm filming YouTube videos and I keep repeating the same things over and over and over again and it's so annoying. And I know that I do it, but when I'm filming, I don't even think about it. But when I'm about to film, I'm like, you can't do that you can't repeat and then i just go ahead and do it anyways because when i'm filming i don't think <laughs> i just you know speak so going through that phase in high school and being super aggressive was very much terrible for me and my mom noticed a big difference in me and i was very mean and aggressive towards her which i absolutely regret because she didn't deserve that and i was also very mean as a kid and very quiet as a kid as well because of what I went through. And my mom did not deserve that. But also I was a child and I didn't know what the hell was going on. But um, yeah, it really shapes the, the way you view the world. And you know, all that jazz. Anyway, I'm gonna quit repeating myself. Graduating high school was very different. Um, I had to actually move schools because I got kicked out of that one. So I moved to a different school and my life was still the same there. <sighs> different environment. I dressed the same. I acted the same. They did not accept me as much there. No shit. Um, and I fell into like a void with myself debating on who I actually was, who I wanted to be what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted my career goals to be, where I wanted to go to college. A lot of shit happened to me at that time. And I was very scared because I didn't know what was gonna happen to me, you know, because I was crusty at that time, we'll say crusty. I was, I didn't have the best of friends. I didn't value friendship. I was very, you know, I was not a good friend. Um, <laughs> I was a terrible friend. And I hate that because I'm not like that now. But you live and you learn, girl. You live and you learn. I'll post a better picture of what this actually looks like at the end because now it looks crazy, but I'll post a better picture at the end so you can see what all of it actually looks like. Because the lighting is kind of making it a little crazy. Graduating high school. Um, another thing with BPD. Okay, hold on. Time out, girl. Graduating with, um, gr sorry, graduating high school. 
I didn't really celebrate myself because as somebody with this disorder, I don't celebrate my accomplishments and I don't reward myself for things because I see it as I have to do that. I should be rewarding myself for that because it's something I have to do. So I don't see the good things in myself and I had a very negative mindset growing up and it led me up until the very beginning of college. So graduation was not that big of a deal to me. I don't remember any party I had for graduation. I don't remember my birthdays. I don't remember like things I did as a kid. I don't remember a lot of crucial moments in my life because of this disorder. And it sucks because when I see pictures, I'm like, who was that? Or where did they go? And mom's like, that's me and you. And I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck? So it, like I said, it distorts everything and you feel stupid. You feel dumb and you feel different than everybody else because, you know, but you can't help it. You know, we keep thugging it out on our own. So I uh, graduated high school and I went to Marshall University directly after I got accepted to Marshall. I applied to every school that I could and um, Marshall, oh, Marshall just texted me. Uh, they just sent me an email. <laughs> um, I moved out of my dorm uh, recently. I finished my very first semester, but we're jumping so far ahead. So I started my first year at university. I was very scared, um, but I knew that I was able to be independent because I've had to be mature from such a young age that I have always been independent and dealt with my own problems myself. Like I said before, my therapists really weren't of any help, so I had to learn how to do it my damn self. That was that. I figured my shit out. I fucking thugged it out, and here we are. I decided that my major was going to be criminal justice, which is perfect for me. Um, and I just thugged it out from there on my own and figured out my life and what I wanted to be, what I wanted to do, what classes I wanted to take, learned everything about college, made my own schedule. So I really grew up at this time, even though I was already grown. I grew up at this time. So it was very difficult. This fucking inner corner right here is pissing me the fuck off. You see this, you see how this is up here and this is down here? That pisses me off. Also my eyebrows are fucking a little uneven so it fucks up my entire makeup look. And it pisses me the fuck off. So I really started to figure out who I was. Um, I will say that when I was in the dorms by myself, I had a lot of panic attacks. And a lot of mental breakdowns. And I had um, not a midlife, but I had like a midlife like crisis. Trying to find out who I was and where I belonged. And what my real identity was. And it really took a toll on me throughout school. And I started not going to classes and started, my grades started dropping. And that's not me. Like, I have always been, like, a B student, always on top of everything, turning stuff in. I've always been, you know, a very good student. See myself, like, I started to see myself weird. Sorry. Getting my Hello Kitty makeup on. I started to see myself weird down a lot. And this was my second, mm, yes, my second semester there. My first semester was fine and dandy, but the second semester was fucking god awful. I would call my mom and have, you know, very still vivid panic attacks, you know, crying, screaming, not really screaming, but crying and worrying about my own future and how everything was going to end up and where I was going to be and if I really wanted to do what I was going to do and then I didn't know myself and that every day I was living a lie and I didn't, I was trapped in those dorms all the time. I would not come out. Um, I would not come out of those dorms. I fucking refused to go do anything. I literally was scared to do anything because I didn't know if what I was doing was true to myself. Like even taking a walk, if I took a walk and then came back and was like, I shouldn't have done that breakdown. Cause I was like, I didn't want to do that. That wasn't me. Da, 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 da. 
it's so hard trying to find your own identity in this time of your life with no help. Not really no help, but like I said, I helped myself myself through everything and I had to get everything over through myself. But it, it really just, it really takes a toll on your mental. And I literally fell the fuck apart and haven't been the same for a while until recently. Um, I had to take a break for a minute because I did not know that this would emotionally drain me. And I honestly did not expect that. So, um, college and, well, I already talked about high school. College was a lot for me to go through, personally. And I don't really think that it's for everybody. It's definitely not for everybody. Especially if you don't. Shit. Anyway, I don't really think that it's for everybody. Um, I think that some people need to decompress before they go back to school, honestly. Um, jumping right into college was, it, it wasn't a regret, but it was a lot for me to handle. And it's really not a good memory when I go back and talk about it. It's just not. I'm not going to browse. Don't fucking judge me. I'm just filling them in. Um, so yeah, when people ask me how my year was, I go, it was fine. Because it wasn't. But I don't want to be like, oh, it was terrible. And then I have to go into detail about it. So I normally tell people that it was fine. My experience was fine. And that I didn't really have any issues. Which I did, of course. It was a lot. Doing the FAFSA, going to financial aid, figuring out scholarships, just everything. And now, with all of my family's issues right now, like I said, my grandpa's passing. It's very difficult to figure out if I want to go to Marshall or if I want to stay local and go to a local state college. This was NYX. And then the other one was just a CoverGirl clear lash mascara, but I use it for my eyebrows. This is, what brand is this? I don't know what brand this is, it does not say. L'Oreal, Brilliant Eye Liquid Eyeshadow. I use this a lot, I love it. I use it as a base. Jesus Christ, I use it as a base for my actual like shadow that I put down afterwards so more of it will stick, make a pack. Um, but yeah, I wasn't really on my A game this semester, which of course I wasn't expected to be. I'm just expected to, to just get the damn degree. You know, I'm not expected to be an A student. And I think that that is a very high standard, at, at least for college students. Like if that is your personal goal and you are that determined and that driven to do that, more fucking power to you, girl. But I just want to get a degree just to have enough money to live my life and not have to worry about affording everything so and I also with this degree I want to change the world and change the criminal justice system and I have very high ambitions for myself I'm a very um intelligent individual and I know that I have a lot of potential so a lot has changed with my BPD but the main thing I want you guys to take away from this is that it affects everything you do and everything you think in your daily life. You overthink everything and it will always be a part of you. So if you know somebody with BPD, do not give them a hard time. If they are excited about talking about things because we really don't have that many friends and we don't make friends because we are very self-independent and very kept to ourselves. I'll say that much. We're very kept to ourselves. So we don't really spend time with others. We like it to ourselves because we really just don't trust people that often. This is the Revlon, just a big ass eyeshadow. It's amazing, I love it. No freaking way. My life has changed a lot. I did go to therapy. I did start with a new therapist, but she really didn't help me that much. Um, I really just got over everything myself and it felt mandatory to go to my therapy sessions 
which should never be the case. You should be going and it should be a fun experience and a learning experience for you. But for me, it was a complete opposite and I would miss appointments because I was trying to figure out my own fucking life at the time. And yeah, so I just missed a lot of appointments and she moved me to as needed, which will never be as needed because I'm no longer her client. I'm not going to do lipstick because I'm about to take this shit off, but um, I will do lip gloss. I'm on, I'm on medication for it. I literally, like, yeah, it's a real serious thing and it fucks people up for life. So don't be mean to people with BPD. Give them time. We have a distorted reality. We most of the time don't even know what the fuck is going on. This is my big ass Revolution lip gloss, Makeup Revolution lip gloss. I fucking love it. Oh my God. It has a minty, like, hint to it and I really fuck with it. That is my overall of my life and everything I have had to go through and that's my life story and living with BPD. Um, if you want to research it yourself, I would highly recommend that you do so. It's a very real disorder and not just a TikTok trip. My life is not the same as everyone else's and it sucks. It really does. It sucks dick. Really bad. Constantly, every day. So we overthink everything that we do all of the time and this is just me speaking from personal experience i'm not recommending medication therapy treatment anything at all no ma'am not doing that fucking disclaimer this is my personal story and i'm telling it how i want to fucking tell it bitch period yeah that's gonna do it thank you guys so much for watching you can subscribe and follow my tiktok where i'm gonna post just random shit of me probably doing filters because that's all i do on tiktok Anyways, I love you so much and thank you for watching and thank you for listening and educating yourself on the topic. Okay, girl, this is what the makeup really looks like. It looks a lot different off camera, but you know, did I slay? Probably. I don't fucking know.